Welcome everyone. I am Jennifer Farrell, LAMPS Plus Pros member and Los Angeles-based interior designer. So today we're going to talk about tips to refresh and brighten your home. I see a few more people are joining us. Hi there. So while we wait for them, perhaps I can briefly tell everyone a bit about LAMPS Plus. Family owned, they've been in business for over 40 years. They're the largest specialty lighting retailer in the US and they have experts that can help you with whatever project you might have. So if you have any questions during this presentation, you can ask them via the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen and I will answer them at the end. All right, let's get going. So, you know, staying at home has taken on a whole new meaning the last few weeks. So with that in mind, I want to offer you some simple style ideas that can help make your home a more comfortable, livable place to be in. Here are five tips to use. Tip one, use layers of light. So let's begin by taking a look at how to use lighting in your home. Uh, this first image is from a showcase home that I designed called Wolf Peak. As you can see, the room has multiple light sources. This is what you want. Honestly, most homes don't have enough light sources and they rely too much on overhead lighting. Here's another room with multiple light sources. So the light creates dramatic pools and layers of light. This is an interesting, inviting room to be in. Now, you don't wanna overlight your room like it's high noon or, or like it's an office space. And if you just use recessed lighting, that's what you'll end up doing. You wanna create a look like you would see in an expensive restaurant or a Hollywood movie. Now, as you can see, light from different sources around the room gives you those layers and pools of light. The play between light and dark is both comfortable and visually interesting. Uh, one mm -hmm. final note on layers of light. To help get the look, use dimmers. These allow you to easily set light levels for different activities. All right, tip number two, create a focal point for your room. A lot of rooms feel somewhat uncomfortable to be in because they lack a focal point, a place that draws your eye in and lets us know what the room is for. Now in a living room, this tends to be the sofa because it's the largest piece of furniture. So start with it and then decide where it looks best. A common arrangement is to face it to a fireplace or the TV. If you have two sofas, face them towards each other with the fireplace or TV at the end. The idea here is that you're creating a conversation space. Now, in the bedroom, the bed, of course, is usually the focal point, but make the most of it with a decorative headboard that draws your eye to the area. So the picture we're looking at is again from Wolf Peak. I wanted the window wall to be the focal point of this room, so I chose a bed that's approximately the same height as the bottom of the window. For the focal wall in this bedroom, I wanted a little extra bling to draw the eye upward. So instead of table or wall lamps, I chose ceiling pendants. Not only do they give off beautiful light, but they're visually unique with that cool Sputnik shape inside that black and bronze metal cube. These really mirror the shape of the black windows behind them, so it helps enhance that focal point. Then at the foot of the bed, I added a conversation area, which is great if you have room to do so. I think it's a wonderful feature for a master bedroom. Not only does it frame the bed area, but it's a great place to sit in the mornings and have coffee while watching the sunrise. Now, if you're working with a blank wall where you want your focal point, then you can use an interesting paint color as a background, and that will help create the focal point for you. So for example, here's another bedroom where the deep emerald green paint immediately pulls your eye to the focal wall. So the headboard, the lamps, and the nightstands really pop. You know right where to look as soon as you walk in the room. And that is a focal point. All right, tip number three, reflect natural light, bringing the outside light in. Outside light is the designer's secret friend, and it's time for you to make use of it. So position a wall mirror to reflect the light and the color of the outside world back into your room. Now, you don't have to have a mirror directly opposite a window. Use on a flanking wall to indirectly reflect the light in. Even if a room doesn't have a window in it, say an interior hallway, 
you could still hang a mirror so that it reflects light from a bright and sunny room in order to brighten the space. And you don't have to use just one mirror. You could cluster several smaller mirrors together so you get a wall space that's visually exciting and light reflecting. All right, so here we are looking at a master bathroom that has one window, but I put two mirrors facing each other on opposite walls on either side of the window wall. Now, the window, the mirrors reflect each other. So it looks like there are infinite windows in the reflection. I mean, talk about bringing the outside light in. In these mirrors, the outside light goes on forever. Tip number four, create a happy workspace. Now, many of us are working from home these days, including yours truly, and we're working from kitchen counters or dining room tables, and maybe if we're lucky, even from a home office space. So here are a couple ideas you can use. First off, declutter your work table. To the extent you can, get rid of any distractions. Then get comfortable with proper seating. Adjustable office chairs are always good, but you can use an accent chair or a bar stool with a back support at a counter and so on. So here we are in Wolf Peak. Now these are very comfortable bar stools. They are padded and they have a back and the work surface is clean and decluttered. So even though it's a kitchen, you can still focus on your work. One of my favorite gadgets, by the way, is that plug-in workstation base. You can place any lamp on top, then use the USB ports and outlets to charge your devices. This design also includes a full range dimmer, so you can easily adjust the light level to whatever task you're working on. Adjustable lamps next to computer screens are another great idea. Position them on the opposite side of your writing hand so you don't cast shadows on your keyboard or your work area. And there are some designs that have built-in USB ports, which is just such a helpful feature. Tip number five, add a smile to your decor. You know, I always like to add a little something to a room that's personal or fun or unexpected, something that gives you a smile during the day. Now, this could be just about anything. Think home accents like pillows, uh, tabletop sculptures, or wall art. One of my favorite design ideas is to display family photos and artwork. You choose a tabletop or a wall as a focal point to group all the pieces. And then I also love using fountains, like patio fountains outside or tabletop fountains indoors. They just create a relaxing sound and are soothing to look at. It's instant zen. Oh, this picture is of a cozy spot in the Wolf Peak home that always makes me smile. That fun, colorful pillow, the horse sculpture, the antler candle holder, those are some of my favorite things in the house. So by clustering them all together and creating a cheery little nook, I smile every time I walk by that spot. So to recap the five tips, use layers of light, create a focal point, use mirrors to reflect natural light, create a happy workspace, and add a smile to your decor. All right, it is time to answer a few questions from viewers. So let's take a look. Oh, um, one question I did get was, how can I view this session again? And actually, several of you have asked this. So we will post the webinar to the YouTube channel for LAMPS Plus, and we can also send you the link. All right, um, what is that design you show? All right, so some of you have asked about specific designs shown in the webinar. So if you reach out to us, we can pass along that information to you. Uh, okay, here's a good question. How many light sources do you need in a big room? That's a fabulous question. And that's actually based a lot on how many conversation areas or focal points you have. So example, uh, if you've got a really large great room, in that room you've got maybe a dining area, a living area, um, another sitting area. So you wanna have multiple light sources, kind of like what we talked about before. And you have those three layers of light in each of the areas. All right, so let's talk about the dining area of that room. In that part, you could have maybe one or two or even three chandeliers over the dining table. Then you could have a torchier or a floor lamp in the corner. You could even use a table lamp on the table as an accent piece. So it's a great way to add lots of light sources in a really big space. 
Uh, let's see, one more question here. Oh, do you have any size recommendations for using wall mirrors? Uh, I do because for me, I think mirrors bigger is better, but the larger the size, the more light and color you'll be able to bring into a room, which I'm a fan of. You don't have to just use one mirror though. You could try grouping uh, like several smaller mirrors together. So these smaller mirrors don't have to be the same shape or the same size. You can mix them up and get a really interesting look. Um, okay, let's see another question here. Ah, I don't have a fireplace or a TV in my living room. How do I create a focal point? Great question. So you could use uh, a piece of furniture like an oversized armoire or a cabinet, uh, wall mirrors, um, art, anything above a sofa could really work to pull your eye in. Or you could use a really large ceiling light fixture to group your furniture under. And then if you love the look of a fireplace, but you don't have one, here's a great idea. You could actually add a fireplace surround and a mantle so you get that look of a fireplace and then in the empty box you actually can fill that space by taking round logs and cutting off the ends and then gluing them onto the wall and so you it looks like it's stacked up wood inside so you've got this really beautiful focal point without ever having a real fireplace uh okay one more question uh oh here's a great one I've been looking for a bedside table lamp and haven't seen anything I like. So what are your tips? Aha. So let me say this. Most people don't like their bedside lamps because they can see the bulb when they lie down. So the glare is what's making you uncomfortable. So if, instead of just a regular table lamp, think about maybe an adjustable arm wall lamp. Or with the table lamp, you can use that, but first lie down in bed and get a rough idea of how low the shade needs to be to help shield your eyes from the bulb. So then you look for a design that's the right height. All right, uh, let's look at another question here. I want to use LED light bulbs to save energy, but how do you make them look as nice as regular bulbs? Okay, so 10 years ago, maybe the LED bulbs weren't as beautiful and interesting as they are now, but now we have incredible options. And here's a trick to know about LED bulbs. Nowadays, you can get them all dimmable and there are different colors of light. When you look on the box, you'll see something with a K at the end, that's the Kelvin. So it's technically the temperature of the light, but the way your eye sees it will show you different colors so that a 5,000 K bulb is very uh, cool light. It feels very clean, very white almost like an outdoor lighting. And then you probably don't wanna use those inside your house in too much use because those can feel a little bit cold. So save those just for specific task lighting where you need that really clean light. I like to use 3000K to 3500K in a lot of indoor lighting because that's something that's as close to say, a 100 watt incandescent bulb in its coloring. And that's something that we're all kind of used to that color of light. So that's probably my favorite. Then if you're looking for something that's even warmer, you could use a 2700K bulb. So the color is gonna be a little more yellow, a little more warm. That's something you wouldn't wanna use necessarily for task lighting. You'd wanna save that more for ambient light. All right, let's see if we've got another question. Oh, what's the best way to light a kitchen? My favorite question. So if you're lighting a kitchen, you definitely need those layers of light. So if you have an island or a breakfast nook, make sure you've got something visually interesting like a chandelier or some pendants because those are gonna draw your eye upward and provide lovely light on your workspace. If you can, get recessed lights or ceiling lights because that's going to give you that great general lighting, a clean, even spread that'll help you when you're working. And then I like to have accent lights like under cabinet lighting because even though it's great not only for your work surface, if you have it on a dimmer, which clearly I love dimmers, then you can actually dim it down and have a great glow at night. All right, that's all the time we have for today. But if you have any additional questions about these tips, we wanna hear from you. Lamps Plus experts can help you out without you ever having to leave home. Just use our free online lighting design service. And for more inspiration, visit us at lampsplus.com 
or check out our YouTube and social media channels. I'm Jennifer Farrell. Thanks for watching.